you'll notice that other mentoring platforms often measure and focus on certain metrics to determine the success of programs. These metrics are usually things like the number of signups or relationships, the number of mentoring sessions or hours spent mentoring, number of messages between participants, or the number of goals or tasks set. At MentorLoop, we consider these vanity metrics cloaked as engagement activities. These numbers, on their own, fail to surface the quality and sentiment of your program. They merely describe whether your program is increasing or decreasing in size, and very loosely if something is happening. And here at MentorLoop, we don't think that's enough. So why don't these things work as great metrics of mentoring program success? Join me as we explore why. Let's start by looking at what positive professional relationships have in common. According to the Harvard Business Review, it's these three things. Number one, the understanding of the relevance of the relationship. Number two, the understanding of whether and why the relationship is transactional or transformational. And three, the commitment to maintaining the relationship, even in conflict. Looking at these three things, you can see why those vanity metrics don't cut it when trying to determine the success of the relationships within a program. None of the metrics we mentioned earlier will tell you about the commitment your mentors and mentees have for the mentoring program and their mentoring partners. The number of pairings in the program doesn't tell you if those partnerships are productive, nor does the number of meetings. Active messaging doesn't describe whether your participants are growing from the relationship. As a mentoring program coordinator, you invest a lot of time and energy into developing and maintaining an organizational mentoring program. We're pretty sure you would also like to make sure that your efforts are well spent. So how should you be measuring your mentoring program? Well, for one, your mentoring program should be monitored and evaluated across its lifetime. We always stress this because only evaluating at the end means you can't course correct. You should also make sure to use a healthy mix of qualitative and quantitative data. This way, you'll be measuring not just the engagement in the program, but also the growth of your participants. In the next video, we'll show you how you should be doing this and what kind of qualitative and quantitative data you should be going for. In the meantime, if you're looking for more resources on how to run a mentoring program, check out our website for tons of articles and resources used by 50,000 people worldwide. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next one.